All right, I come to you from a different location today that are known as my basement. Why? Because one, this, means, this thing's been sitting down here for the last year or two since I got it from eBay. Two, I don't have any hardware to install this on a door and probably never will. And three, I brought the big batteries in from the shed for the winter time. So, because it's starting to get cold here. This is a 1950s Electro door. No, this is, no, it's on the other side. No, it's not plugged in. Good. There you go. I'll plug it in in a moment. This uses the, um, like a, uh, a channel that rides between here. This is the front of the motor. This is the back. I do have some of the original paperwork here. I don't think this is all of it because, and I'll get to that in a minute why I don't think it's all of it. Other than the fact that there's not a lot here to it. Uh, this is, I, I think the front page or what would have been the front page maybe. It says electro door. We make electric garage door openers, gate operators and commercial installations. And they were located in California. There you go. Now uh, this was intended for sectional and one piece of doors. <clears throat> like I said, this, I actually got this from California, so it probably was on a one piece door. Uh, let's see, there's the, this gives you an idea of what it looked like. Uh, this metal bar would actually stick out behind the opener when the door was open. Uh, there's a video somewhere on YouTube of a, a genie from roughly the same time period that is exactly the same thing. <clears throat> it is possible that those old genies were actually made by the same company, but who knows, but I have no idea. Um, if anyone wants to see that, I'll, if I can find the video, I'll link it down in the description. And these are front and back. They don't have numbers on them, do they? No. These pages are also in fairly rough shape. I'm just going to kind of show this around. And the handle that it's talking about here is this handle. This is the clutch adjustment. And there's the thing for if it was on a sectional door. You actually had a, a rail with a traveler and a door arm. I guess they just used a one piece arm. And it's just a straight arm back then. And then there's everything else. Yeah, they call it a drive rod. And I'm assuming just hitting something is what made it stop. Or maybe it pushed something over somewhere or something. Uh, this does have a switch inside to reverse it. I don't know if that's supposed to be like a limit switch or not. Um, because it reverses pretty darn easily. Which I don't think it's supposed to. I have the, I actually have this clutch here set to a, um, a bare minimum. See if I can get it to run any length of time. I was just running this. And this motor's pretty warm already. And I have, oh yeah, I also got the original radio controls with this too. Let's see. Now this is just a one-sided thing. I guess this was might have been for the receiver that was available at the time to make it adapt for six volts, or to make it adapt for twelve volts. Oh no, this is for the transmitter. And then I do have the um. This is the original owner's manual to the radios that I got with this. It's multi LMAC, so multi code today. Oh, and this is when they were in uh, Michigan on 559 East 10 Mile Road. And it just tells you how to install all this. And I guess there was a way to actually test for signal.
tells you how to tune it. You have some basic diagrams here. You see, that's the receiver, which is this thing. You just have your terminal hookups here. Literally only two terminals. This is um, tube style radios. I'll show you the receiver in a moment. See, that's the, um, this is the transmitter up top here. And this one down here is the receiver. Which, that's the power cord. That thing's massive. And I don't know if anybody remembers the uh, Perma Power set. This is a good bit bigger than just one of those. Actually, uh, the receiver and transmitter on the Perma Power were about this big. So, there you go. That's how much bigger the receiver is. And I don't know if you can actually see the the tube the tubes in there. And it tells you how to wire it so it doesn't actually um, use power when you're when the car's not running. And there was a uh, an adapter to adapt for 12 volts, if I understand this correctly. It's been a while since I looked at this. Um, I mean, a lot of cars back then actually had ran had six volt systems, and that's what this would have ran off of. You would have to buy the um, adapter to make it so it would work with twelve volt. And I don't have that, and I don't have that wiring diagram unless it's in here. Now let's see. This is transmitter. This is the wiring diagram for the transmitter. Someone else wrote in here too at some point. I guess someone did. I'm assuming someone did work to this at some point. And then it gives you for anyone that wants to build this. There's your there's your parts list. Uh, you can pause that and take a screenshot or whatever. And then there's the rest of your diagram. Let's see if I just get them both in the same. Oh, it does have a date. 12-21-1953. Okay. And the receiver. Which I guess the schematic was made August 21st. Yeah, August. 1953. Let me tell you how old this stuff is. Uh, this is just for the radio control, so that, that gives you, that certainly gives you some idea to how old this is. Kind of figured it was from the 50s. And, again, your parts list. And the whole rest of the diagram. Anything else here? Nope, oh, that's it. A lot of this stuff is as rare as this is. I was actually surprised to get, surprised and quite happy to get paperwork with this thing. And I'd say that this motor was somewhat cool enough to run. I'll show you the guts of this thing. Make sure it's unplugged. Transformer. There's the uh, the relay to. Activate the motor, so that's a weird looking. It's not the typical mag relay that we have now, but it's the same basic thing. It has one contact for open, one for close. Actually, both of those might fire at once. Uh, I'll figure that out when I hit the button. It is gear drive, and it is metal. Both gears are metal. Big transformer. Uh, I, honestly, I don't think there's a capacitor in here, despite that this is an AC motor. Unless it's actually in the back of the motor, but I don't remember seeing one inside there. Uh, 
This windings are pretty dusty. I don't know if we can see in there or not. There might be a capacitor in there. I don't remember. And honestly, I really don't want to take off the back plate to look. Sorry. I don't want to. And on this side, flip it over. There's your rollers. One has rubber on it and the other one's just metal. Uh, this is the driven roller off the motor. And this one has the, uh, the clutch. Uh, I don't know if you can see. It's probably too dark. Flip it back over. I don't know if you can see the uh, that switch back there. The toggle switch. Uh, that's what makes it reverse. The only thing I need to do is not have this thing bound up in the carpet. Oh, and this big piece of angle on, on the, uh, what would be the top, is actually how you'd hang it. I don't remember if I showed you this, but that would be on top, and you'd, like, sandwich that between the 2x4 and your joists. Let me plug this thing in. Oh, yeah, I had to put a power cord on this thing when I got it, because it was originally hardwired in. And these are... The two wires that I had on here from when I got it. Uh, this has some certainly interesting stuff in here. Uh, these two, the white and black wire here, and the copper piece I had to replace. I have no idea what they do, but they were broken, so I replaced them anyway. Let's see if I can... Well, let's just do it by this. Uh, at some point, if this motor gets hot, it does smoke. I know the motor is garbage on this. Uh, I tried a Chamberlain motor and it's a little bit too small to fit on here, unfortunately. I mean, I won't find something for it later, but. I'm not gonna... You stop that. I'm not gonna run it too much because like I said, this motor is shot. I guess something in the motor just disconnected. And I guess I have the clutch set loose enough so it doesn't keep reversing itself. Let's see if I can hit this enough so you can see the uh, spark of the relay. Oh, you get the idea. It's amazing how old that is and it still works. And even when I was hitting that, um, the motor actually was turning a little bit. I had to run this a little bit more for you. And see the smoke there? Yeah, like I said, the motor is garbage. And this motor gets ridiculously hot pretty darn quickly for the short amount of time that this thing runs. It's pretty darn hot already. I, I was running it before the video, not a whole lot enough to make it overheat. I don't know if this has a thermal protection on it. I'm kind of thinking that it doesn't, but I don't know. I've never messed with this enough to find out, and I am not really interested in catching anything on fire here. No thanks. Uh, the next, let's see, this is going to be the last video. Well, the last opener video for this year, because the batteries are inside and it's going to be too cold out by the time you get to see this. This video and the last two videos that you got were pre-recorded and set up on YouTube to be released on specific dates. Actually, it's how a lot of the previous videos have been. That's about the best way that I could figure to set up a regular video schedule instead of me trying to constantly find time to do another video. Uh, the remaining three openers that I have are the Alistair Type 2A, the Alistair Super Belt, which I'd really like to see that run myself, and the Eagle 1000 overhead door. Uh, I did repair the Eagle 1000's board. I have not tested it though, so it's no guarantee that you're gonna get a video of that because 
I don't know if that board is actually going to work or not. I fixed it as best I could, but I'll figure out what happens when I put it up on the door next spring. Uh, after I run out of openers, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'd like to keep the content on this channel rolling, but we'll see what happens when I get to that point. Who knows, I'll probably have more crap, more operators to video by then. <laughs> As for winter time, I'm kind of thinking the videos aren't going to stop. I have some old Sears catalogs that I'd like to do videos of. And an old, like a 70 plus year old hand vac that I'd like to do a video of. That I'm sure someone out there would be interested in. Anyway. Might as well, um. No, why not? Let's just run this thing one more time. Since this will be the last opener video for a little while. And that's enough because it's a smoking again. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.